Okay, hello guys, it's Wood, and I just wanted to do something for the smaller streamers, or even larger streamers, anyone who's looking uh, to possibly improve their audio, or how they might possibly listen to music on stream without the stream hearing it, or just audio writing in general, so, um... So as you can see, this is voice meter banana, which well, right there, uh, it's free. So I really recommend it. It's I'm not sponsored or anything, but like, it's free. It's a little complicated, but I'm gonna break that out for you so you don't have to worry about that. So first thing, uh, we have our hardware inputs. So these up here on the left. Ignore everything that's here. I'll explain it as it goes. But this is anything that plugs into your computer that can be a audio input. So in my case, I have a mic in my front panel. I have a nether mic. And then I have a virtual cable. I'll explain that later. Though. And as you can see, audio is coming through it. But I'll get to that one. The other bit you have is hardware out up here. You will always need at least one. So for A1, I have my speakers. So this would be my headphones. And then for A2, I have my Realtek High Definition Audio, which is my SP diff out speakers. So this would be my expensive sound system. And then I don't have anything for three. So these are hardware inputs. They're all real. They all plug into my computer or hardware output, etc. So they're not bad. Uh, one thing I will mention is when selecting them, you'll probably see duplicates of all your inputs. So you see how there's WDM, KS, and MME. Uh, you will want to select WDM or MME but you will not want to mix and match the two. So if you pick, uh, say, WME microphone, Samsung Meteor mic, you will always want to pick WME DM for the whole rest of the time. Same for your outputs. So next up, uh, when you install Voice Meter Banana, you will get these sound devices that get added. This is on Windows, and all it is is an in two inputs. So these act as like a microphone or anything else like that. Like, sorry, that's actually, uh, they act as a input for an audio device. So you can route music to them. You can route anything to them. Uh, I set one of them as my default audio device, and then all me all sound will route to that. So any game I play, anything I set like not specifically to go to something else, goes to vo this one. Uh, and before I get into that, these virtual inputs, they're all just data lines. They don't actually exist, so they're just on your computer. Uh, they allow you to do some fun little things. Uh, there's also the exact opposite, which is the virtual outputs, which you'll get two of those as well. Ignore my line one here. Get to that later. But uh, yeah, so the two inputs, input and aux input, are also represented on voice meter banana right here. So there's my ver voice audio input and aux. And vice versa, we also have two outputs shown here, these two. They also are routed to two outputs over here. So what this means we can do is, for example, I can take my microphone, which is this hardware input to, and I can say, I want to put 
that to my headphones, which I currently am listening to myself talk, which is very disconcerting, but useful. And I can also put it to the virtual output B1. So B1 is one of those virtual outputs. That would be my uh, voice meter output, which is my default. This allows me to on the fly change things. So like if I don't want to listen to myself, I can unselect A1. So that was my speakers. And now I don't hear myself anymore, which is wonderful. Uh, it allows you to also do things like mute on the fly so I can mute myself if I wanted. Or in this case, I have two microphones for when a friend comes over and wants to play games and be on stream. I can mute this mic so there's no background feedback, but I can still leave it enabled. Uh, so the way you route the sound to each one is you use these little selectors. So like, if I click A1, anything this sound line makes goes to A1, or A2, or B, the virtual ones. Then from there, in, say, Streamlabs OBS, I can set my virtual output to be that output device. And same with my actual sound. I can set my aux sound as my default. So like any sound that goes through my aux, like that's the B2, you guys will hear. Currently, I'm listening to music. And you guys do not hear any of it. You can see that the aux out does not receive the sound. This is because my B2 only receives the sound that comes from the games or anything that uses the default uh, voice meter input input device. So all of this sound going on like right here, this is music which is going to A1 and 2, which are my speakers and my headphones. And you can see that over here, it's actually using music, making noise, but it's not routing to any of the outputs that you guys would hear. So that's a way to split out music. Say you're frustrated, you don't want YouTube to copyright strike all your videos, but you want to, say, chill out, play Overwatch or another game, and just play for the night with music on, but you don't want your stream to hear it, or you don't want YouTube to copyright it later, this is a way to split it out. Now, I have both the virtual inputs in use, uh, or I used to have them both in use. I don't use voice meter aux at all. I technically can. I can replace uh, this other line one with the voice meter aux but I just have this set up, so I'm not gonna bother. Uh, so like, for example, uh, one of the things you can do, and I'm going to get that up on the uh, screen here. Look, I forgot to add one of my window captures before I started this video. There we go. Uh, it's not the right window capture. Sorry about this, guys. Fortunately, the capture device is a little finicky. Okay, it doesn't seem to want to show it because uh, it seems that Streamlabs has a problem capturing uh, separate apps, so Windows 10 apps, which this one setting window is. Uh, Windows 10 has a setting called Mixer. And what you can do with Mixer is you can set a specific app to go to a specific output. And all I do is I set my youtube or chrome to go to line one or anything that i think i don't want stream to show up on 
I set it to go to line one, which is a virtual device. Uh, that's created by something called virtual audio cable, which I can show. There's my little virtual audio cable. That'll be a separate like little tutorial. I won't go over that, but if I replaced line one in Mixer, so Windows Mixer, and just type Mixer in the bottom left corner, it'll come up and you can see the output and input. You just set the output. If I set it to voice meter aux input, I would then be able to take this, uh, like this voice meter aux here, and route it wherever I would want. So I could do A2, A1, and the music would come through here. So this voice meter aux, and then it would go into my headphones, but not the stream. Same thing as this virtual audio cable that I'm using, but that's a little more complicated. Things you can probably ignore, you probably won't have a need for these. Um, these are for like voice modulation. Uh, if you right click on any of these, it cycles through the different types. So for example, I'm going to listen to myself here. Uh, I can make myself funny and change my voice. And if I ever don't want that, I can always double click and it resets it default. And same thing, I can go to your right ear or your left ear, shit like that. Pretty useful. Uh, you probably don't need these, but it's just nice to know what they are. Same with uh, mute, solo. You don't really need to learn any of them, but quite nice. Like, I muted myself there, etc. So, uh, things you might want to learn is one, fader and gain. If I find, like, I'm going to raise myself a little too loud here. Uh, if I find myself peaking like this, uh, by default, I can just say, oh, like, you probably couldn't even hear me there. But uh, I could drop myself quieter, louder. Uh, same with any audio routed through any of these sliders. So... If your music is overpowering you, you can kind of do all of that in here rather than trying to finagle it all through Streamlabs. Like, in Streamlabs, all I have is one input for my voice, which is the normal output, and then I have the aux out, which is my game sound, etc. Uh, yeah. So, in Voice Meter, there's... An alternative if you don't want to do things like noise gate. So a noise gate, for if you don't know, is you can set a level at which the voice will not trigger. So like, if I stop talking for a second, you see this bar here? This is me talking. If I stop talking, my mic's still going to be picking up ambient noise. Yeah, so you saw that little bit of ambient noise. It's always picking up. That'll go on along with clicking and key clicks, and that'll go on your stream. You can go into Streamlabs, and you can set up a noise gate, which I attempt to show. Uh, right, separate window, one moment. Let me just add another window capture. Actually, I can't because it closes it the second I do it. Interesting. Oh, that's not a go. Or that one. Uh, but you can set up, you can see I have one filter set up here. Oh, actually you can't because it doesn't show drop down. Uh, I have one filter set on this, which is a noise gate. I do my noise gate through Streamlabs, but Voice Meter Banana allows you to do it through just itself. So, like, see how I have a noise gate set at 7.3 on this mic? Uh, I had that set up because I didn't want uh, myself to be picked up on my friend's mic beside me 
but at the same time, I don't want them to pick up on mine. So setting up noise gates is a really good idea. That way you don't hear like chip munching or other stuff. So definitely recommend to like just click and turn one on and you just drag up and down and it sets. But uh, one thing I forgot to mention is if you double click on any device, uh, whether it be the noise gate or that sound like I just did there, it'll reset to default. So if you ever screw something up, double click it, it'll go back to normal. No problem. Uh, other things I've done is, let's say, oh god, the game sound is super aggressive and you don't want to hear it really loud. Uh, I've turned it down in my headphones, but at the same time, I have my speakers really loud. So you can keep your personal output set. Uh, the other thing to do, and last thing I'm going to show you before I end off this video, is this little tape recorder here. So what you can do is one of two things. You can either record input from devices. So you select whatever devices you want to be the input and just hit record. Easy as that. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can click here and you can select an audio file and select where you want to play it to. So say I wanted to have an opening song. Uh, I would click the, like the audio file and I would say put it to B1 and my headphones. And anytime I wanted to do my opening stream song, I could technically do it through here. And that's another easy way. Streamlabs and OBS has kind of better ways to do that, but at the same time, it's nice to have this feature in here. Uh, also, each of the output masters, you can set up a uh, second window here. That a game window capture for it real quick. There we go. So you have a actual professional EQ if you want it. I don't recommend it if you don't know what you're doing with it. I don't bother for the most part because there's no reason for me to use it. Uh, other things you can do. Uh, you can do the equalizer up here. You can do stuff here. Not really needed. You can ignore it for the most part. And that's pretty much most of the complicated stuff. What I do recommend, though, is make sure you save your settings in this menu up here. Uh, you can't see the capture because I don't want to show my desktop, etc. But there is a save settings button in here, and you really should save it quite often. because Just in case you crash, you never know. Otherwise, I hope this helps, and this will be the first of... Hopefully many how I do my setups and how you might accomplish things to better your stream or YouTube videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Hello it out.